Well, uh, look, despite trade worries and, and the issues that face companies like Sears, we're actually adding yet another day to the longest bull market in history. You know, I always tell you guys, don't count out American business, even during turbulent, scary times. Had you started investing nine and a half years ago when the market hit bottom? Well, let's show you. Since March 9th of 2009, the S&P 500's compounded annual growth rate has been 16.5%. That's up 322% total over the nine and a half years. So you need to accept the fact that recessions are a fact of life and they're not the end of the world. Billionaire Warren Buffett, he loves to say he has lived through 12 recessions since he was born in 1930 and successfully invested through a lot of those when he got old enough to do it. So has Wall Street legend Byron Wien of Blackstone. Here in a Fox Business exclusive, the vice chair of Blackstone, $440 billion in assets. We call you the market guru, Byron. But um, you were born in 1933, right. Buffett in 1930. So you, because the Great Depression was that long. So you've seen about 12, correct? Right. So, so gauge this. Of all the recessions that you have watched and, and been cognizant of, because I'm assuming that when you were five, you weren't watching, although I could be wrong. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> uh, which one? has had the most impressive bounce back? I think the most, uh, the 73-4 was the most impressive bounce back. So not this one? Um, no, well, this was very impressive. I mean, we're up 322%, as you say. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, 73-4, people had given up, you know, and the market came back, and you really, um, you had a run until 1980. Mm -hmm. And then from the 82 re re recession, 80-82, sort of a two-year recession, then you had uh, a, a run until 1990, and then you had another pullback. When you look at this S&P 500 chart here, and I asked my team to bring it way back to 2004 when the housing uh, froth and bubble had really started and everybody thought the markets were so great, they don't even, at that heightened level, compare to what we see today. Right. Yeah, this has been a terrific period. Um, you know, we've um, uh, you know we've had ten years of pretty steady growth, and you've really seen a transformation in the market. In addition to the fact that the market is up a lot, the number of stocks is down a lot. There are only half as many stocks being traded today as there were a decade ago. Does that worry you? It does. Yeah, I think the market is getting too narrow. I think there's too much inward looking, you know, the debate over quarterly versus semi-annual earnings. Uh, you know, I think uh, there's a big change in the psychology. Also, uh, you have logarithmic trading, ETFs, and other techniques that are really taking the place of traditional investing. Okay, but Byron, if the market right now over these past several years has been a speeding car in a very high gear for so long. How much gas is left in the tank? A fair amount. Uh, the, the, the market is only at 17 times next year's earnings. Mm -hmm. The multiple isn't great. Leading indicators are still rising. Unemployment is still decreasing. Inventories haven't accumulated. The yield curve hasn't inverted. I could go on until closing bell on it. <laughs> you know, so the fact is that none of the signs that usually precede a recession are there. Now, I think we're going to have a recession after the next presidential election. That'll be probably 2021, and the market may anticipate it a year before. So I think we've got another couple of years of a bull market. Okay, you just said we might see another recession by 2020. Just what, because? 2020, another recession by 2021. By 2021. A turn down on the market in mm -hmm. 2020. Okay, well, what keeps this going? And, and per, perhaps is it the tax cuts? Earnings keep it going. Earnings are always the driver of the market. Tax cuts and deregulation is a part of the earnings improvement. Mm -hmm. But, you know, earnings this year are going to be up 20 percent compared to 2017. And earnings in 2019 will be up 5 to 10 percent. Does it surprise you how resilient this market has been? I go back to June of 2016 because we were watching Brexit and the day after Brexit, Global markets were in a panic. You had the FTSE 100. That, that's their version of the Dow Jones uh, Industrials in the U.K. It fell 500 points. The Dow fell 611 points. 
yet the markets have climbed back out and well beyond that hole. And then, and then you could look at something as, as simple as, uh, you know, last year's saber rattling with North Korea. Everybody thought there might be some type of missile attack with right. Kim Jong-un being as nuts as he, as he is. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen it. Well, look, and look at all the p political turmoil in Washington. Earnings drive the market. And as long as these geopolitical events and political events domestically don't affect earnings or don't severely affect earnings across the board, the market will work its way higher. What about President Trump's uh, legal issues that swirl around him? And I'm not just talking about how his attorney, Michael Cohen, has just pled guilty and that, of course, his former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, has also been convicted. But uh, the president said, if you try to impeach me, the markets will crash. Well, the president hasn't been right on a number of things, and I don't think he's right about that. Uh, I don't think him. I think impeachment is a waste of time. I don't think it'll happen. Not with, I but think if it did, is he right that the markets would crash? No. Uh, I don't think uh, if, I mean, if he were impeached and had to leave office and Tom Pence took over. Mike, Mike Pence, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, Mike okay. Pence, Tom Pence is his brother, who's a friend of mine, <laughs> um, and Mike Pence took over. Um, uh, I think uh, the market uh, would probably do well. Do you get concerned, though, that we have tax cuts, higher government spending, and we have the debt clock, $21 trillion? At some point, does that uh, trigger some type of, well, let's just say a correction? Look, you know, Dick Cheney said deficits don't matter. In 2000, the accumulated debt of the United States was $6 trillion. Today, as you say, it's $21 trillion. Mm -hmm. But in 2000, the debt service on that $6 trillion was 6%, or $360 billion. Today, the debt service is a little over 2%, or $450 billion. Mm -hmm. So the debt has tripled, but the debt service has only gone up 25%. When it comes, should people fear a recession? Well, I mean, we've gone through 12 recessions in my lifetime, uh, and the market is a lot higher. Uh, I think recessions are a pullback, but they're not the end of the world. And the United States, as Warren Buffett has famously said, always comes back from them.